Welcome to the weekly review from March 17th, 2024, where I go over index futures, bonds, and currencies. And in these weekly reviews, I'll go over this past week's current price action, as well as what's to come in the future. So without any further ado, let's get to the video. All right, so I am looking at the weekly economic calendar and I have this past week as well as the week to come. So this week was interesting, especially for index futures, because it was rollover week. And what is rollover week? Basically, in futures, we trade on different contracts. There's four contracts for the four quarters. So we have March, June, September and December. So I like to use this website called Bar Chart. And it allows me to see all the current and future contracts. So you can see right now, looking at the E-mini S&P, we are currently on the June contract. So prior to this past week, we were on the March contract. Now we have rolled over to the June contract. And the way that I like to know when we have rollover is you can see June right here and the next contract will be September. So prior to this week, it was June here and then we had March. But if we look over to the right, you can see the volume, which is the total number of the shares or contracts being traded for the day. Whether this number is 100% accurate or not, it doesn't really matter. What we're looking for is what number is the highest. So like I said, this past week, June finally became higher. So this was the second week of March. If we go to the first week of March, March still had a higher volume. So that during that first week, I was trading the March contract. But now that june is now higher and you can't see march now because we fully rolled over but before this week ended you could see march but when the volume becomes higher then you want to go to that contract so you always want to trade the contract with the highest volume and the open interest should not be greater than 50 percent. so let's say march contract had an open interest of 2 million then if you want to trade the june contract because the volume's higher the open interest shouldn't be under 1 million because that's 50% of the 2 million that would have been in the March contract. And I'm just picking a random number that's easy for math, but we are now on the June contract. So the reason why I brought up the rollover is when we go to the charts, you're going to see that it was a consolidation week. And typically when it is a rollover week, price tends to consolidate. So you really want to be a scalper during that um, time. So right now I am looking at the news for the British pound, the US dollar and the Euro dollar and the Aussie dollar. So the way I like to do it is I go right here and this is forexfactory.com by the way. I go here and I like to only toggle the high which is the red and the medium impact which is orange and I like to only pick these countries because these are the countries that I trade for forex and for um, bonds, index futures, that's uh, US based. So I want to have the US right there. But I also trade the New Zealand dollar, the British pound, the Euro dollar, and the Aussie dollar when trading Forex or currencies. So basically, when you're looking at the economic calendar, you can kind of get a glimpse or a feel for what the week may do, what days might be the more volatile days, what days might be consolidation, just to get like a weekly template. Typically, like if you have your higher impact news on like Thursday and Friday in the week, you typically have some type of consolidation or manipulation move um, Monday through Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday are the better days to trade. So this week we had one, we had CPI on Tuesday. So your big, big move is going to happen on Tuesday. That's going to set the tone for the rest of the week. And then we have PPI for Thursday. So that's going to set the tone for Thursday and Friday. So you want to always pay attention to the economic calendar. So when we go into the chart, you're going to see how the week um, played itself out, knowing that it's rollover week and that big news was on Tuesday and Thursday for the week. And then looking at the week to come, the big news for this week would be FOMC. So the better days, the most, um, how, how do I say this, the cleanest technical days are usually going to be the days after FOMC. So Thursday and Friday are the clear technical days. Not to say you can't trade Monday and Tuesday, but the really nice sustained moves usually happen after FOMC, after it's taken one side of liquidity and now it's time to 
get the other people. So yeah, looking at this, and I'm going to change it to US real quick, because that is the news that really sets the tone for the, all the markets. Because at the time of recording, the US dollar is still the king dollar, it might change in the future, but right now it's still the um, global currency. So going back to this week, starting on March 18th, we have the building permits on Tuesday, medium impact. So there could be some good volatility there. And then, like I said, the big news happening on Wednesday with FOMC, that is going to have your really expansion moves. And also on FOMC, you don't really want to trade ahead of it. Usually it's a consolidation or manipulation move earlier in the day. So like London session and the AM session, New York session, it's going to be um, not in your favor most of the time. And then at 2.30, which is 30 minutes after the FOMC comes out, but we also have this press conference right here. So you might want to wait till three o'clock on Wednesday or not trade it at all and just wait for, like I said, Thursday and Friday with the really good days. And that's really it for the economic calendar. Let's get into the charts now. So we are looking at the weekly chart for the S&P. Ignore these boxes. They don't really mean anything for now. But um, the trend has been bullish. I've been saying it for a couple of weeks. I am still bullish. I will not pick a top in this market until we get more confirmation on the weekly and daily chart that it wants to have a more sustained move to the bearish side now when we do go to the smaller time frame chart you can see that there is the potential that it could start to make that um bearish shift and we're entering a new quarter quarter one just ended that's why we had that rollover so we could have a quarterly shift and have see some bearishness in the in, in the indices but until you get that confirmation and what is that i'm going to show you guys that in a minute until you get that confirmation you have to be a scalper maybe a day trader depending on the day of the week but there's really nothing on the weekly right now um we just had kind of like an indecisive week and another indecisive week but if we go to the daily chart and if i zoom in we had this high price failed to take out this high but the bodies did take it out the only thing i don't like about it is that we closed above consequent encroachment of that wick. I would have ideally liked to see it take it out. And on NASDAQ, so if I go to NQ, it didn't make, I know there's a lot of lines. Let me clear that up. This same high didn't make a higher high, but the bodies also didn't go above the body. So we have some body to body SMT and going back to ES. Oh, sorry. Looking back at ES, there goes that body, the body SMT. So the bodies go higher here than here, but it did close above consequent encroachment. However, it did not, if I put the full quadrants, so this would be like 75%, 50%, 25. We did not close above 75%. So looking at that body, the body SMT, and then if we go to the four hour chart, we can see that we had a shift in market structure here, right? Because it's in between this fair value gap. So this high, this low. So if I draw it out, so that swing low, we take it out and then we come back to it here. So if we draw from this high to this low and I change the preset to OTE. So this box, this line right here, let me get it just right all the way to this orange line right there. That's optimal trade entry. So you can see that we had optimal trade entry and we can see the reaction here. So that's why I said there is some indication on the smaller time frames that we could be seeing a quarterly shift. However, I'm still only going to scalp and day trade until we see more on the daily chart. So let's go back to the daily chart, delete these lines. So what do I need to see on the daily chart? Well, first we did close with up close candle, right? That was good order block we close below this up close candle i would like to see it close below this candle right here if we close below this candle then this is definite not definitely but most likely getting ran through these lows and then you want to see what does this volume imbalance have in play so right now what i'm looking at is this volume imbalance going into uh this week coming up and potentially next week where is VI? So I'm not changing my long term stance. This can just be this week and we trade into it. This does not mean ES is bearish going forward. We can just trade up, trade down into it and go higher, right? 
or not even do it at all if we don't close below this. But if we close below this up close candle, I'm treating th that as my order block. So we can close below it, come back into it. Ideally, there's some type of imbalance on the four hour chart, come back into it and then go into this volume imbalance. And then we wanna see the reaction there. Do we trade through it, come back to it and continue lower, creating like a bigger market maker sell model for Q2 or do we just have a manipulation move for Q2 and then create another market maker buy model to continue to make higher highs. Don't know yet. That's why I like to play it week by week. So going into this week, I am looking for closure below here to confirm bearishness to go into this volume imbalance. So that is it for ES. Let's move over to bonds or actually let's go over this past week's price action. So looking at past week's price action, you can see why it was pretty much a consolidation week. We opened up here and we closed at the same level. So if I put a line on the open of the week right here, put a line on the open, you can see that we basically closed at the same level. Let me make it a little bit thicker. We basically closed at the same level. So during rollover week, you're more typically going to have some type of consolidation. So now let's move over to bonds. So looking at bonds, this is the hourly chart. We're going to go back up to the weekly first, but I just want to show you how nice bonds trade compared to other asset classes. So you had this consolidation right here, right? That consolidation. And you can see the clear market maker sell model. It just trends day in, day out. Bonds tends to trend more than the other asset classes. It's the most professional asset class out of all of them. So now let's go back up to the weekly chart delete some of these lines so we came off of that fair value gap and then remember we traded lower but we fell just short of this fair value gap so remember like the last two weeks i was looking for it to come back into this fair value gap but it failed to do so so now when we traded higher i was looking at this wick and then when i go down to the daily chart you can see that we had the imbalance here right so let me take this off we had this imbalance right here so we had this imbalance inside that wick and then you can see how we traded off of it and now we're going lower to finally go for this low so that's how price likes to um engineer liquidity it'll come very close to a key level or a pd array and then it will trade away from it to come back in this case to a discount and then go enticing people to think that we are bullish making people buy putting their stop loss here so now it's going to basically knock out two birds with one stone right so it's going to trade lower take out these people's stop losses but also at this same liquidity point people have sell stops so when price trades below here they want to go short thinking it's going to keep going lower and I know if you come from like the ICT community, it sounds crazy to short while wow, prices all the way down here, but there's a lot of people that trade that way. So there's a lot of money that's under this low. So that's why they are trading to it, right? So basically that is my bias for bonds. I'm looking for it to continue bearish to go into this low and that will line up with indices. So we can finally start to see some market symmetry. So that's pretty much it for bonds. And then let's go over to the dollar. So the dollar has been very tricky. I'm going to delete some of these lines real quick. So if you remember, I had this orange box. I was saying this was the low risk buy. I was saying that this, oh my bad. This was the smart money reversal, low risk buy. This was first stage accumulation. And then I was saying that we were potentially in second stage during this time right here. So the reason why I was saying this was the low risk buy was we had this. My bad, let me draw out the whole thing. We had this reclaimed order block, but you see we didn't close above it, right? So we had the low risk buy here. Then we traded above it, came back to it. So I was thinking this was the first stage reaccumulation. And then we had another reclaimed order block right here. And I was saying that we were po possibly in second stage, but looking at price, it's looking like we kind of had either a re-accumulation and then we're going to go higher 
or we're just going to continue to consolidate because if we look at the dollar we've just been consolidating between this high and low so if i draw out that high and low and i put the equilibrium you can see that we just keep coming back to premium discount and it could just continue the range bound but because index futures could potentially be showing some bearishness bonds could be showing some bearishness I'm looking to see was this a second stage reaccumulation just to take out this liquidity right here and then we're going to go higher rip through these fair value gaps and use them as like inversion fair value gaps to send us higher for this high and then we'll see what happens going forward so I am still bullish on dollar even though we had this run here during NFP and usually NFP is a manipulation move so if that's the case for this month that would be um in sync with the other asset classes so i am still bullish on dollar even though i was wrong as to this being the second stage so if you were to enter there you would have been stopped out however we want to see does price want to close above that again and then come back to it for second stage and go for this high and then potentially these relative equal highs we have this gap right here so that would be the target if we take out this high to go for that gap. But I say all that with a grain of salt because the dollar has been range bound for, let's see how long, since July of 2023. So how many months is that? Nine, maybe eight months. We've been range bound. So for any long term thinking, you kind of want to be cautious with all currencies. But that's not to say you can't scalp in day trade. There's plenty of scalps in day trades in the um in any asset class really but that's pretty much my take on dollar i am bullish and i hope you guys enjoyed this market review found it insightful make sure to leave some feedback in the comments let me know how i can be better and if there's any other asset classes or any other symbols that you guys want me to cover so thank you for watching and i'll continue to provide content to you guys in the future